is going to be another book opinion. Those videos in which I'm going to tell you my opinion on a book. And today's book is going to be Renegades by Marissa Meyer. That is the same one who wrote The Lunar Chronicles. And I gotta say, I love this one a whole lot more. So before I get into what I loved and my discrepancies with this book and what I appreciated about it and all that sort of opinion-y stuff, I want to kind of make a disclaimer about this book because I was kind of frustrated with the response that was had to this book when I first got it and I wanted to look up Goodreads reviews and I feel like before I tell you the plot of this book you need to realize a couple things. One, there is no special school that these kids go to. No superhero school. This is an Xavier school for mutants. I am sorry but if you were expecting that it doesn't happen so get that thought out of your head. Two, this is a book for those who like philosophical ideas. If you're into mainstream superheroes, I am too, but if that is what you're looking for, if you're looking for action-packed scenes, for like push and pull between characters, for somebody punching someone out and Loki being in the background and laughing, you are not gonna get that here. There is some action, but this book isn't about action. However, if you're a fan of X-Men comic books, of traditional X-Men, of even the X-Men TV shows, and are used to that push and pull of what mutants have to deal with, that sort of idea, the philosophies, the character interactions, and you're in love with that from the X-Men, you'll definitely enjoy this book book and it is no mistake that Marissa Meyer based a lot of the ideas here from the X-Men. She tells you that that's what's happening. So if you're familiar with the X-Men cartoon, if you're familiar with the X-Men comics, if you're familiar with that whole idea of philosophy where we're watching the push and pull between Xavier and Magneto and these ideals and these characters and like character development and building and tension and drama, then you have come to the right place because this book is for you. But if you're looking for that traditional superhero battle, we're gonna fight and beat someone. No, go away. This you're not going to be happy, you're going to be bored, you're probably not going to appreciate it for what it is, and I don't want to listen to you, to be honest, because you're not reading it right. And like, that's a really harsh thing to say, but I just, no, I'm done. So let's get into actual things about this book. So this book is, like I said, a sort of X-Men idea. So the best way I'm going to explain it is use of X-Men metaphors. So if you're familiar with X-Men, you know there are th people called mutants. They have mutated genes, they have some sort of power. So in this book, those people are referred to as prodigies. They have had their powers released and they now have some sort of supernatural ability and superhero power. And because these prodigies were being treated so awfully, a Magneto type person called Ace Anarchy rose up in America and just destroyed everything he like conquered the government he, he collapsed that he was like nope you're gone he just completely annihilated all forms of government in an america s place and he did this in hopes of bringing the prodigies out from the dark for for them to be allowed to live in freedom of some sort right their right to live without imminent death for being what they are and he did this because it was common for these people to be tortured, for them to be captured, for them to be blamed for every little crime. Like again, if you're familiar with the X-Men, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The discrepancies and the horrible like ism against mutants. Like mutantism? Is it mutantism? I guess so. So Ace Anarchy rose up and he just annihilated everything and he was like, mutants are gonna rise. So this is the premise. Magneto wins. Magneto gets his dream, right? Magneto succeeds in his plan. And then we find out that Ace Anarchy had a downfall 10 years previous to the main portion of this book at the hands of the Renegades. The Renegades are sort of an Xavier type people. They are also prodigies, but they are ones that want to work hand in hand with regular humans. They don't want the destruction of society for the sake of prodigies, but they want to work together and they want their rights, but they don't want like anarchy, right? So they defeat Ace and they set in their own rule and they become the sort of superhero government per se and this is 10 years down the line and we figure out that this government isn't working out 
as well as everyone thinks it is. It's full of little weird things that you're just like, no, 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 that's corruption. You guys are going down a really bad path and we're going to figure out these two sides. So we're getting the story told between two people. One, Nova, who is from the Ace Anarchy side. Her Ace is her uncle. And one from this other kid. I can't remember his name. I, I don't know why I can't remember his name at the moment. But that kid, we're going to call him Drawer Kid, he is the son of two of the heads, or actually three of the heads of the renegades. So we're going to see this whole philosophical battle between the eyes of two different people. And we can see that both people are sort of in between these two extremes. And we get to see this fight because the book introduces you to this concept that Ace isn't really the villain. They're going to villainize him. They're going to call him evil. Renegade propaganda is going to call him the worst person who ever existed but he was a man with a vision he was a man who wanted more for his people and searched for more and he accomplished that so are we supposed to call that villainy or are we supposed to call him a man with a vision so we're supposed to have this little internal debate between these two characters and between this whole world where we see the goods and bads of both sides we see the bads of the anarchy regime and then we see the bads of the renegade regime and we see some of the things that the renegades do for the sake of being a good guy and it calls back to some of the shady stuff xavier does in the x-men comments where you're just like do don't do that that's shady and gross and no you just no 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 and that's really what I appreciate this book for, is we're going to have to decide for ourselves who we think is in the right or who would we back. And we're going to have to fully accept that the persons that we back and that we say are the right dudes have done some pretty awful things to get there. So who is the real villain in this story? Because it's not just Ace. It's not just the renegades. There's no easy villain for you to point and blame for all your problems. So that's why I love this book because it really pulls together that conversation that you have a lot with the X-Men and it puts it here in its own little fashion and it makes the reader try to figure out whether or not the person that we continually call a villain is actually a villain. And I love that idea because I've always always supported villains. I like villains. And I like supporting villains. Like I like making arguments for the sake of the villain's behalf because sometimes the villains that we say are villainous and pure evil aren't actually as bad as we have been forced to believe, that we have been shown to believe. So I like the book for that. Another complaint that I've heard about this book is the length and that it's really too long. And I would disagree with most people there. I don't think the fact that the book is long is really what's problem with it. It just has some sort of weird pacing to it. So I don't think this book needed to be shorter. I think that what needed to happen is there are certain paragraphs in the the book where it's just full of information that don't seem to add to the story. This doesn't happen overly often but it happens often enough that you just kind of glaze over because you're reading filler sort of chapters. And if you're familiar with anime fillers I, I don't know if you are, maybe you watch anime, but do you know how in anime they'll sometimes have anime fillers where it's like nothing to do with the current art going on, but if you watch it, you actually learn some pretty interesting information, but at the same time, you're just kind of bored because you're just like, but I want to get to the main arc of the whole anime. That's what happens here. There are certain little paragraphs and stuff that are filled with intriguing and interesting information, but they feel more like filler than anime actually additive to the story. So I think that's why people come out of it and some of them are of the belief that this book is too long. I don't think it's too long for the story that is being told. I just think that there are inappropriate uses of information where it's used in a place where it didn't necessarily need to be and it felt more like filler than an additive and a chance to learn more about the characters and the stories. I think another great thing about this book is again if you are an X-Men fan some of the little hints and things that go on to this if you're familiar with the X-Men in any capacity you can see a lot of parallels 
parallels here and I I think that's fun okay like I will never ever begrudge a book for taking inspiration from something else I also love which is why I love Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. It's inspired by Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. I like that book. So I can't begrudge this book for being similar to X-Men and Marissa Meyer taking her own takes on a lot of concepts you see in X-Men because I found it really really enjoyable. So I think this book is more for those comic book fans who are really interested in seeing a sort of world where people have superpowers and we're going to have an argument versus philosophy and how the world should be run and that sort of thing. It's not going to be action heavy it's going to be like thought heavy like you're gonna actually have to think your way through this and you can't just take everything at face value otherwise you're not really like reading the book and that seems a little harsh but like sometimes there's certain books where if you just took everything at face value you wouldn't see like all the facets of the book and this is definitely one of them so you gotta pay attention like that's all I gotta say so I like this book I like X-Men I like comic books I do think it has a little filler problems so the pacing seems a little off sometimes I don't think this book is for everyone I just think I think it's more for those people who like those philo philosophical battles and like those dramatic parts in comic books that are built on character building more so than they are built on the fact like that the person has superpowers and is doing superhero -y stuff. So Renegades is a good book. I'm definitely excited to see what she does with the second one. I I just I like it in general. Like I will never hate on something for being similar to something else nor for being predictable at times if it does a good job in making me think entertaining me so I think even though there are some like pretty big things in here that would bother some readers like it being so similar to X-Men in some aspects or it sometimes having weird tropes or sometimes having like weird pacing issues or sometimes having plot twists that are fairly predictable if you're like used to comic books and stories in general those are all there and some people will have an issue with it but I think the more important part of this story is sort of this idea of what is real villainy who's a real bad guy because it's obviously neither of these people because they're both equally gray so Renegades is a book that I read that I have a lot of feelings on as you could probably tell so if you've read Renegades comment down below whether or not you liked it I'll try not to leave angry comments back I want your honest opinion did you like this book did you honestly enjoy this book and what were your issues with it if you had any because I'm I'm curious like did you see the same things I did or did you see something completely different because I like I don't know I, I honestly don't know. I'm only one person who can read a book my way. So if you like what you're seeing here and you want to continue to see more, click all those bunny bunnies down below and goodbye, internet.